Hey guys, how's it going? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on Core Java Programming. So this is going to be a quick theoretical video on the topic of control statements. So before we actually get into the programming part of control statements, I just wanted to explain you theoretically what happens in a program and what do control statements help us achieve. So as you can see on the screen, we have an example program. So this is the public static void main function wherein the program execution begins. So I've just drawn some dotted lines, which are some program statements. Let's assume there are some random program statements. So when the program executes, it starts off with the first line, right? Then it goes on to the second line, then on third, then on the fourth. And that's how it goes. So it happens sequentially and in a linear way, right? So from first to the last one. So that's how a typical program execution happens, starting from the first line to the last line of the main function because main function is the starting point of the program execution in Java programming. Okay, so what if you want a decision to be made in the program? So say for example, at this line, so at this line, which is one, two, three, four, fifth line. So this is the fifth line. So at fifth line, you want your program to make a decision. So let's say you are storing a number. So let's say you're saying int age is equal to 21. Okay, so this is a variable that I'm creating of integer data type. So now we've already seen variables and data types and operators in Java programming in the previous couple of videos. So let's say I created a variable of integer data type and I have named it as age and the value that it has is 21. So at line number five, I want to determine whether this age is underage or overage. That is, is it less than 18 or is this greater than 18? And depending upon that, I'm going to do some other work or other task. So then there are two options, right? Either it is going to be less than 21 or greater than 21, or it can also be equal to 21, right? So it can be less than 21. It can be equal to 21 or it can be greater than 21. So this value can be anything right now it is 21, but typically there are three different options. So this means that after line five, I have three different ways of execution. So this is entirely another way. This is entirely another way and this is entirely another way, which means that this fashion is not linear, right? It can go to some other block and then come back. So this is where control statements come into picture. So this was one, one example. Now let's assume at line number two. So this is two and three. Okay. So let's assume at line number three. So this is line number three, right? So at this point, I want this line to be repeated hundred times. So there is some activity at this line. Let's say there is a statement which is going to print value. So it is going to print value of this age. Okay. So I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln and then I'm going to print this age. But what I want to do is I want to print this age at least hundred times just for the sake of understanding right now. I don't really want to print it hundred times. That would be absurd. But then let's say you want to print it hundred times. So are you going to type this hundred times or are you going to copy paste it hundred times? But then your program code will be hundred lines just to print this message, right? So in that case, you use another control statement, which is known as loop control statement. And this orange one is known as conditional control statement. Okay. So depending upon what kind of activity you want to do, control statements give us an ability to perform those in a conditional way or in a looping or iterative way. So these are the two different types of control statements theoretically. So let's see the different types. So as you can see on the screen, we have two different types of control statements. So this is conditional control statements. This is number one. Then we have looping control statements. This is number two. And then we have some miscellaneous statements like break and continue, which do not fall in any of these categories, but they assist in both of these categories. Of course, we'll see individually each of them and also see program examples. But here we are just understanding theoretically. So under conditional statements, we have the if else control statements and the switch case. For the looping control statements, we have different loops. So we have for loop, we have while loop and we have do while loop. And then these break and continue are individual statements, which can be used in either of these two types. So they perform certain tasks, which we'll obviously see in detail. So individually, I'll create one video for just break and continue statements. So this was a quick theoretical video on what control statements are and what they help us achieve. So conditional statements as the name suggests, will help us when there is a condition or when there is a decision to be made in the program. So whenever you have a decision making situation, you use conditional statements. And whenever you want to perform an activity n number of times, you do not simply copy and paste it that n number of times. So that becomes 
illogical or that does not become feasible at times because say for example you want to perform some activity thousand times you won't copy paste that entire activity or entire uh, n number of statements thousand times right let's say your activity has like 10 statements so will you copy that 10 statements 10000 times or 1000 times that would be irrelevant or that would be absurd right that doesn't make sense so in that case you're going to use the looping or iterative statements so depending upon whether you know the number of times you want to repeat or not you'll either use for loop or while loop or do while loop so we'll talk about them in detail as well so yeah this was a quick theory on control statements and we'll see the different statements individually so i'll create one video for conditional statements in fact i'll create individual videos for if else individual video for switch case for for loop while loop do while loop and then one video for break and continue in the upcoming video tutorials so if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel make sure to subscribe to see those videos first when i upload them you'll get notified also turn on the notifications if you want to be notified first so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the concept of control statements and why we need them in java programming this concept was pretty much similar in c as well so if you're coming from a c background i'm pretty sure things would be very clear if not, we'll obviously go through them individually and we'll see the programs at that time. It will be much clear. So yeah, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.